Well, it's time now for a look at some of the day's business news with France 24's business editor, Cole Stangler. Cole, you are starting in Russia, of course, where those sanctions are still hitting hard. Yeah, that's right, uh, Aaron. It's not just private companies that we're talking about uh, as well. Concern growing over the government's ability to make payments on its debt faces a crucial test uh, this week. On Wednesday, it's slated to pay a combined $117 million in interest on two bonds, payments that are supposed to be in dollars. Big problem for Russia is Western sanctions have limited its access to foreign reserves, Reserves that could otherwise tap into to make those payments. On Sundays, Russia's finance minister said nearly half its foreign reserves had been frozen by restrictions and would therefore make debt payments in rubles for the time being. Today, the ministry has accused foreign countries of wanting to stage, quote, an artificial default, only adding to concerns. Now, Russia does have a 30-day grace period to make this week's payments, but yesterday, even the head of the IMF suggested a default may soon be in the cards. It's a scenario that would have been unthinkable just weeks ago. Take a listen. The impact of the sanctions is quite severe for the Russian economy. We expect deep recession in Russia. In terms of servicing debt obligations, I can say that no longer we think of Russian default as improbable event. Russia has the money to service its debt, but cannot access it. What I'm more concerned is that there are consequences that go beyond Ukraine right. and Russia. Well, there's been a lot of volatility in oil markets over the last couple of weeks, and that's once again the story this morning. Despite the ongoing conflict, uh, investors evidently encouraged by diplomacy between Ukraine and Russia. As you can see here, the price for international benchmark Brent crude dropping uh, just over nearly 3% actually, now trading at around $109 a barrel. It's turned out to the European markets, which are posting some slight gains uh, at the open. Uh, again, for the same reason, ahead of further talks between Russia and Ukraine, the Cacahont uh, up about a half percent, further gains uh, over on the docks in Frankfurt. There is another concern, meanwhile, looming over investors in Asia. That's the lockdown in a number of Chinese cities, including the tech hub of Shenzhen. Shares on the Hang Seng in Hong Kong down more than 5%. Heavy losses there. Also some losses uh, in Shanghai. Earlier, France 24 spoke with market analyst Stephen Innes. He said a major concern is how those lockdowns may affect global supply chains. I think the first uh, pass effect right now we're seeing in equity markets is the text uh, sell off. I think uh, companies like Foxconn that supply Apple with components uh, are shutting down production and this is going to be quite negative. That boils back down to the supply chain issue. I think the second order effect will be the overall impact on inflation again, whether this actually accelerates inflation. So we have to keep an eye uh, on that factor also. Well, the effects of the war and sanctions on Russia are rippling throughout the global economy. That includes here in France, where the government's taking action to limit the hike in prices at the fuel pump. France 24's Leo McGuinn takes a look at that and some of the other ways the crisis is being felt. A new government initiative to combat soaring fuel prices. From the 1st of April, there will be a 15 cent reduction per litre of fuel in France. The scheme will last for four months, but has been met with a mixed reaction by motorists. It's a good début, but it won't be enough. No, it's not sufficient, especially with the petits salaires we have. The move will also benefit fishermen, like here in Boulogne-sur-Mer. For them, a litre of fuel has doubled in price, going from 60 cent to 1 euro 20. The hike in fuel prices has already affected the price of fish, seen at markets like this all over the country. Sur une sole qui est à 28, dans la plus grosse, d'habitude, on est plus à 18-20 euros. Donc vous voyez, par rapport à l'année dernière ou à l'année d'avant, elle va être déjà 8 euros plus cher. Another sector beginning to feel the effects is housing. Because of the uncertainty around the impact of war, the French public are thinking twice before investing. On se dit que c'est le bon moment, pas le bon moment. Il vaut mieux attendre un petit peu plus. Peut-être que tout pour les matériaux, ça va un petit peu augmenter. Donc forcément, si on fait des travaux, ben... This estate agent in Paris has already felt the impact since the start of the war in Ukraine. Visits to their website have decreased dramatically. Il y a des personnes qui annulent purement et simplement le projet. Et pourquoi? Parce que ils prennent des crédits sur 25 ans et que c'est long et que ils ont besoin de pouvoir se projeter dans trois mois, dans quatre mois, dans un an, savoir un petit peu ce qui va se passer. C'est pas le cas aujourd'hui. 
According to one recent analysis, the war in Ukraine could cost annual French economic growth almost one percentage point this year. And Aaron, uh, that fuel rebate measure in France is going to cost the government 2 billion euros. Uh, don't forget, we also have a presidential election coming up next month. And of course, fuel prices, very politically sensitive uh, topic as well. All right, Cole Stangler, thank you very much for the business update.